Hello and welcome, and I'm excited here to report about time series support in version 10. So time series is this temporally annotated data which can be thought of as a collection of time value pairs. So as an example, let's generate some random numbers, some 64 random numbers, and let's assign, build a time series which consists of the times and a sign of that timestamp plus some random permutations. So that builds us a time series. Time series is is represented by this object which contains a bunch of properties like time domain, number of data points, whether it's regularly sampled or not, its dimensionality, and other information. It can be used directly in most of the functions in Mathematica which can take just data. Specifically, we can visualize it by simply feeding it time series into the visualization function. The values of the time series can be scalar, vectors, arrays, or symbols as long as they stay a, a, a rectangular arrays. The time series allows to find a value of a time series by an interpolation. So you, you can query the value of the time series at, um, at, at a specific uh, time, time point. Excuse me, I think I just, um, uh, at a specific time point. So you can ask for that number, and that number is close to sine of pi over 6. Yeah, time series can also be used in some modeling functions. So here we would uh, feed this, this data to a trigonometric model. We will construct a fitted model of this. We, will, we can compare it with visualiz to visualization and see that the fit is pretty good. We can find the model residuals by using new intent time series map thread function, which maps a function of time and value over the data in time series and construct the difference. So we find the residuals here, and the residuals do look like a white noise. Uh, so the model was actually pretty successful. Time series can be regular or irregular. So in this example, we take a 10, 10 primes, and we build the regularly sampled time series, which contains these values, which uh, with a step of three starts from one and goes to whatever number it, it, it is needed to fill in the data, which in this case happens to be 28. We can also build an irregular time series where timestamps are, are actually the values. When you plot this, you see that the, the regular time series has is equispaced in the time domain and irregular isn't. So Mathematica can still support all of this in, in functions it works with. Uh, time series object does support, it provides a pretty extensive support for dates. In this example, we have a list of gas prices, which I made up, and we are building a time series of those from, say, May 23rd to, again, an automatically determined end day with an increment of one day. We get that thing, and we can ask for a specific value of, of that ga gas prices at a date specified by either a string or a new in 10-day object or a, convenient, uh, or a, a conventional uh, list of uh, date list. We can also use most of the descriptive statistics functions in the time series to, for instance, find the maximum value of the gas prices or the median value. We can use visualization like a date list plot to show how that curve changes. So the date support actually is pretty elaborate, and I wanted to illustrate that with an example where we take a data from New York Stock Exchange, and those uh, represent a daily uh, volume of trade in dollars, and we can create a time series which is regularly sampled, but it's regularly sampled over the business days in a specific calendar. So let's extract the dollar volumes amount, let's specify the dates, specifies the increment is a business day, but the business day is measured in the holiday calendars, which is based off of holidays in the United States with whatever conventions adopted by New York Stock Exchange. So we build this time series, and you can see the time series is indeed regular. Here, uh, we can visualize it, and in visualization shows that in a regular calendar, it is not equispaced, but we are able to represent it, keeping the timestamps and um, do some analysis on it. Specifically, this peak is of interest, which represents the highest uh, dollar volume of trade, and that is in magnitude comparable to the GDP of some small countries. Um, uh, so Mathematica give, uh, provides a rich uh, sources of time series. Specifically, this would be an entity framework, which can query a lot of data, data packlets, devices. You can, the time series can be produced from devices. The random function allows you to sample random processes. And Wolfram Alpha can also give this. So I'd like to illustrate this with some examples. So here is take an entity value, which computes a consumer price index. We will define some, some things and say, let's take an entity value of an entity, United 
United States with a property consumer price index with all of those options will get a time series and we can ask for a value of this time series at the turn of the century, that's a CPI. We can rescale the time series relative to this one and then use time series window to zoom into the remainder of the century and to the current part and see that actually the uh, the cost of a consumer basket uh, has gone up 35%. We can also use the existing time series model fit to construct a stochastic model for this time series and we, it results that this is first order integrated moving average process. As this is fully automated and, and that decision was kind of automated without much of an interference from user. And another example is here we take a federal debt of the United States government which is quarterly sampled. We can get that and we can use the support for time series inside the filtering function, the signal processing functions to smooth out the, also the small noise in the time series and compute the derivative. So that will give us the uh, time series of the change in the federal debt and we can compare this to a direct use of differences. So you see that that smooth curve actually deletes a lot of the oscillations and this illustrates the scope of support of time series throughout the mathematical functions. So another example is an air pressure data. We would ask for the air pressure recorded into this uh, few days here at a weather station with a code KMCI which we can then ask for coordinates of it and using the new intent geoneurist determine that it is located in a Kansas city and do the visualization. Device read allows us to read a time series from a lot of connected devices. And I'll be using here a decoy, which is a random signal demo, which generates a random number. So we'll connect to the device. We will ask for its data, which is in the span of two seconds with some increment. And then uh, the, the time series isn't really regularly sampled despite our effort because it happens just as it happens. So we will tail uh, autocorrelation test which requires regularly sampled time series to just treat it as a regularly sampled with this option. We can ask the hypothesis that the, this data are not correlated and we do not find any evidence about the correlation. So we reject the hypothesis. And now we can actually, we are justified in treating the values in the time series as just, just data. So we can use time series inside descriptive statistics. Here we can uh, do a distribution test, ask whether the data came from a uniform distribution. So in this sample, it just says that to reject it. So it doesn't look like a uniform distribution. We can then try to investigate why. So here is a histogram and you see it, it kind of has some statistical, some significant flux in here. We can compare this with the quantile plot and compare, so, I mean, uh, decide of why that conclusion was drawn. Uh, so random functions allow us to find, to, to generate an ensembles of paths of realizations of a process. So we, we will take an autoregressive moving average process. We will generate it from time zero to time 50 and 250 samples of those. When, so, so the output of this is a temporal data which was in, uh, present in version nine. The slice of this gives us a sequence of values. I mean, actually, it's a collection of values of this process at time four, so represented by data distribution, and we can compute the mean of that, for instance. The time series, uh, on the contrary, holds one path, and its time slice corresponds to its value. So when you try to convert from a temporal data to a time series, what it does is that it computes really the mean over the slices, and its uh, value at uh, slice four exactly corresponds to the mean. So here is another fun example. We can ask Wolfram Alpha for a Wikipedia statistics on two web pages about Easter Bunny and about Santa Claus. So when we retrieve those, we can build time series out of them and a date list log block shows that the interest to these objects actually are picked with a, a distinct seasonality. So we can use new intent function called find picks to actually identify the position of those picks. So we resample time series to make it regular. We find the picks and then we ask the dates of that time series. We do this for the uh, Easter and we do this for Christmas and we see that the actual locations of the peaks are pretty close to the holidays. Uh, time series can be manipulated. So in, in this example, we will map a function over its values. We will retrieve wind speeds and a headquarters of champagne. And we will imagine that we have a wind turbine installed and with some particular power output profile. And so we'll build these functions and map time the power uh, function over the time series of this wind data, uh, making sure to remove the missing value, to interpolate the missing values out. 
This will give us a power output time series, and we can use a moving map to smooth it out and finally visualize it and, and, and do some further analysis with it. At uh, the conclusion, I wanted to show that also the time series can be combined. Uh, uh, so you can take, for instance, uh, time series of some, um, again, from a data from a data packlet, we can take a sun positions and a moon positions, which produce us a vector value time series of longitude and latitude of the celestial objects in a specific celestial system. Then we can define a function which computes an angular distance on the sky between these two things, and we can combine those time, time series of sun and moon using that angular distance function using mu in 10 time series thread and visualize it. This will tell, show us that the position, angular position on the sky between these two objects actually oscillates with an approximate period of one, of one month, which is precisely what you would expect. And I'd like to conclude that with another example of combination, which might be more, um, no, excuse me, which might be more related to uh, like a, a personal sort of finance. So let's consider that we are investing money into a SP500 por uh, uh, top SP500 constituents, the portfolio, and we will, we will take those constituents, retrieve some from some website, we will use financial data to uh, ask for its closing prices over the span of 2013, and we can plot those, so we see these things. Now we have an allocation vector, a vector of weights, and we can use time series thread to compute the value of the portfolio over time, we'll get that time series which we can use for the further analysis. So at this point, I'd like to thank you for your attention and point further interest to the uh, marketing pages on Mathematica, uh, on the reference.wolfram.com uh, and on the marketing pages on the website. So thank you.